Hi, my name's Harry. I'm the lead quantum product engineer at QControl. Today I'll show you some basic information about using the QControl Python package to access our Boulder Opal product and highlight some nice integrations with Jupyter Notebooks. You can view our user guides with example code on docs.qcontrol.com. A convenient way to get started with the QControl Python package is to copy code directly from these user guides into your own code. The first step is always to import some basic packages and create a QControl object, which you use for interacting with the Boulder Opal API. You can keep working through the user guides to learn about the functionality, but if you already have a basic understanding of what you're trying to compute, you can learn a lot from within Jupyter just by interacting with the code. Our latest functionality is available from the qcontrol.functions namespace of the qcontrol object. In Jupyter, you can use tab completion to see the list of available functions. In this case, let's compute a filter function. Once you've selected a function, you can hold shift and press tab up to four times to get a box showing information about the function and its parameters. Note that this documentation is also available in a fully rendered and cross-referenced format in our reference documentation, which is available at docs.qcontrol.com. And that's the best place to go for full details of our features. If all you need is the right syntax, however, this box makes things very easy. Here we can quickly create a filter function for a basic system performing an X rotation with amplitude noise. We see from the signature in the box that we need a duration and a list of frequencies. We also need controls. In this case, let's use a single shift control. Again, using tab completion and the shift and tab trick, we can get information about the shift control. Here we see that we need a control, which is a list of segments describing the time dependent properties of this control. And once again, we use tab completion and shift plus tab to get information about the parameters of the real segment. Here, we just need a duration and a value. We see from this box that we also need an operator and a noise boolean. By setting noise to true, we're indicating that this control is affected by amplitude noise. Once these parameters are set up, we can run the function. When the function is finished running, we can use the tab trick once again to get information about the result. Here we can see that the result consists of a list of samples. We can print out the first one. A useful next step is often to visualize your data. In this case, we can use the QControl Python visualizer package to conveniently create simple plots of filter functions. Now, we need to convert these samples into dictionaries with frequency and inverse power elements. As a trick, you can use the asdict function to convert any of the QControl outputs into dictionaries. In this case, we need to apply that function to all the elements of the samples list, so we can also use the map function. This is all we need. This is all we need to produce a nice plot of a filter function. Hopefully this presentation has given you some tips to help you get the most out of Boulder Opal. For a deeper dive, go to docs.qcontrol.com to see some more examples of what you can do with Boulder Opal, and try out the interactive notebooks at app.qcontrol.com. You can also view more demos, videos, and tutorials by the team at QControl by subscribing to our YouTube channel.